Let's go over that report that was released this morning on export inspections. If you uh, take a closer look at these numbers for corn, soybeans, and wheat, they were all lower than last week. Corn, 683,854. It was 1.18 million last week. The uh, sorghum, 180,000 compared to last week's 195,000. Soybeans, 539,000. Now, that little bit of an increase there, not a, not a big, big increase, but the wheat number was lower as well, 469,000. And last week's um, just, just a shade over 650,000. So oh, let's look at the corn market now. It has been responding to, of course, the big news today was the crude oil market. We are on, uh, well, we were on a lot of these lows of the day. Went down and made new daily lows here about, uh, about 25 minutes ago, about 20 minutes ago. And now we're seven and three quarter cents lower, 314 and a half on the May contract. New crop December down six and three quarters at 336 and three quarters. Now that leaves us just a shade off of the bottom here. Marlon Bowling just handed this story to me also uh, that says, uh, and this is from Dow Jones, uh, the crop progress report is expected to show aggressive corn planting. That'll be out this afternoon at uh, 4 Eastern, 3 Central. Brian Hoops is here with us. Brian, um, how much of this pressure we're hearing in the corn market do you think is related to expectations that we're planting corn, or is it all based on crude oil? Yeah, good morning, John. It, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of planters are running across uh, some of the fields across the Midwest this weekend and into today. I had a client tell me he's 68 days ahead of planting corn or ahead of last year, he, you know, just because it was so backed up last year with the cool, wet conditions. So kind of the opposite uh, right now. That's pressuring the corn market, and you have the fact that crude oil is getting slammed in the this morning some, and the summer months also down fairly sharply today. That's weighing on the on the corn market as well. We expect we'll see additional plant closures, uh, as far as ethanol plant closures, into the next several weeks and maybe more into the summer unless the crude oil values rebound and ethanol margins improve. Otherwise, the corn market is, is really going to struggle. The funds are holding some short positions and likely to build onto those until we have some major weather event that would pull us out of these short positions. All right. Uh, let's see what's going on in the soybean market here. We're four and a half lower on the May contract, and the November's down four and three quarters at 846 and a quarter. If we go on to the wheat market, though, well, I tell you what, uh, Brian, that's been a little different story. July at 15 and a half on the Chicago, the Kansas City wheat market, uh, that market's 16. High. We got as high as 507 and three quarters on the May, 514 on that new crop, that July contract. We're at 501 and a half now. But we have pulled back a little bit. Why is that? How come we weren't able to hold on to those earlier gains? Yeah, you know, I think the, the corn and soybeans dragging the wheat maybe off of its uh, highs here today. The Chicago wheat, the December contract, was the one I was paying the most attention to. We came right up near its uh, trend line. And once we touched that or came close to it, we backed off considerably. You know, the wheat market here was pushed higher by ideas that Russia is going to uh, limit some of their exports over the month of uh, May to mid-May, maybe even late May. Now the market acts like uh, you know it's kind of dialed in some of that news already and, and now wants some of that fresh news. And it's just going to be hard for wheat to rally much uh, with corn turning lower and, and corn likely to be put into more feed rations compared to the wheat market. July Minneapolis wheat up four pennies at 523 and a half. Stay with us. Uh, Brian and I are going to talk livestock next. You'll want to join us for that here on the Market Day Report. Well, I'll take you back to Friday here for just a moment. We had the product market, both beef and pork cutouts on the higher side. Today here at midday, they are higher again. Choice beef up 783, selects up 883. Over in the pork cutouts, it's all higher. And the big mover, the belly market, $23.95 higher at $82.96. So I want to start here in the uh, lean hog complex because we went up and uh, rang the bell at that new limit higher. And then we backed off a little bit. May hogs up to 17, June hogs up to 20 at 45.87. Brian, uh, pull back here as well. Um, and some new news here just a moment ago about a pork plant. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's pulling this hog market off of its highs. And we could see, you know, even more of a pullback. The uh, plant in Worthington, Minnesota, that's about 60 miles west, or excuse me, east of Sioux Falls. And uh, they have announced they're going to be shut down. And that process is about 20,000 hogs 
uh, per day. And so, to, you know, when you combine these plants, we're looking at 8 to 10 percent of U.S. pork production offline. So another bearish uh, supply news from uh, the, this virus that we're trying to fight. And, and until we have a better handle on that, it's going to be very, very difficult for these uh, hog markets and, and cattle for that market to have any type of a sizable rally. We're in the live cattle. It's the front month of April, down 27 at 94.37. Today's the 20th. Uh, we've got, what is it, uh, 10, 9, 10 days here left, not even that many, uh, to uh, see if we converge cash with the front month. June, down 45. And I want to check feeder cattle as well. The feeder cattle markets all week as well. May down 135, the August down 25. Have you heard, Brian, or can you get any feel for whether uh, we're going to converge, meet halfway in between here on this front month contract and the cash, or uh, any ideas? Well, we, we should get, uh, you know, some better convergence in here, you know, as, as we get closer to the expiration of that. Uh, you know, the, the market uh, feels like it wants to. Uh, it's hard to get a handle on that cash market. The 105 that was traded on the auction on Friday was quite a bit higher than some of the Plains cattle or that was traded, although it was, volume was very light, very small. All right, Brian, thank you very much. Always a uh, pleasure. Uh, take care of yourself and stay safe. Let's uh, check and see what's going on with that Dow Jones Industrial Average again here as uh, we uh, get ready to go right into the middle of the day. 23,892, down 267. So, Christina, we're off of our lows earlier today, but uh, still on negative territory. Yeah, still can't make up its mind.